Hello, listeners. This is Kat, and welcome back to Put Your Hands Up Hot Fix. This will be the continuation of Little Acts of Kindness. This will be Part 47, Chapter 47, entitled Trauma Be Gone. Coda shuffled after Amplifier as they walked along their patrol in Kyoto. It was Wednesday, and so far most of his week had been uneventful. He was learning a lot, though. Amplifier was so different from him, energetic and cheerful. Her easy enthusiasm was really encouraging. It was still hard to speak, though. But at least she wasn't trying to force him to speak, instead offering gentle encouragement. She also helped him focus on learning how to channel his strength, something Coda had ignored. He never liked his bigger appearance, hating that he took after his mom's side of the family with his looks. His dad always told him that he shouldn't be ashamed of how he looked, but it was hard, especially given the reactions his classmates tended to have. Arriving at UA, he had been surprised that none of his classmates reacted negatively to him. At least, until Midoriya caught sight of him, the smaller boy had widened his eyes and shuffled away from him, fear in his eyes. It hurt that one of his classmates was afraid of him, but Koda wasn't one to blame others, so he made sure to stay away from the boy to make the school year easier on both of them. But it was strange. Midoriya seemed to have no issues with Tokiyami, despite the boy having a mutated body as well. And then, the second week of school, he got his answer as to why Midoriya seemed to fear him more than the other kids. Sue had been insisting that they were friends, and Midoriya had freaked out a bit, Mike Sensei sending him away to calm down. And Bakuko revealed a bit of Midoriya's past. Look, a couple of shit extras basically befriended Deku back in middle school. Once they learned what he was scared of, they basically forced him into such a situation. They found he was scared of small, dark closets and bugs and thought it would be a good prank to force him to confront his fears. So they shoved him into a room that another kid with an animal quirk had filled with insects. Then that same kid commanded the bugs to attack Deku. I heard what was happening and ended up pulling the damn nerd out. He had to go to the hospital afterwards and all further attempts at friendship were met with panic attacks. Bakugo hadn't named either of the attackers or described them, but the information of a kid with an animal control quirk and insects was enough for Kota to realize who the culprit was. Midoriya had been in a classroom with his cousin, Hachisuka Taro, his cousin who had a similar appearance to him, though he was a fair bit bigger. His cousin, who controlled insects and was the reason Kota feared bugs, he knew his cousin was a troublemaker just like the rest of that side of the family. Coda didn't like any from his mom's side of the family, not since he was eight and she tried to get him to use his quirk to help them in their work, hurting him when he refused to help out in crimes. Coda was lucky his dad found out about her hurting him, had divorced her and gotten him away from her and that side of the family, though unfortunately, they never managed to convince the police to look into them and find out about their crimes. His mom's side of the family often moved around when the police started looking into them. Anyways, Coda could understand why Midoriya was scared of him, if he had an experience with his cousin. Koda only hoped that one day Midoriya would realize he wasn't like his cousin. You ready for today's patrol? Amplifier called out. Koda nodded. All right, let's get going then, she cheered, and the two of them left the agency. Koda stuck close to her as they started wandering the streets. So, Anima, what sort of hero are you hoping to be? A support or rescue hero, Koda signed to her. I can definitely see you as either one of those positions, Amplifier said, giving a bright grin. The many-legged prey are being weird. A cawing of a crow called out, Coda's quirk automatically translating what they were saying. Yes, yes, unusual behavior, another crow called in agreement. Anima, is something wrong? Amplifier asked him, seeing as he had stopped to listen to the conversation. I'm not sure. The crows are saying something about unusual behavior. It might be nothing, but it might be better to ask them, just in case they saw something else, Amplifier suggested. Coda nodded in agreement. Excuse me, could I have a moment of your time? The crows, hearing his call, flew down to him, landing on his outstretched arm. Yes? You need something, Yadakarasu. I was wondering about the strange acting of many-legged prey. Could you perhaps tell me more? Yes, of course. They move in unusual swarms. Normal, many-legged prey who fight working together, attacking the two-legged ones with unnatural venom. A dark sign, O oh great Yadagarasu. It is him, the leader of the many-legged prey. The leader? Could you be describing Tithonus? You spoke his name, the praise god's name. Yes, yes. Thank you, my friends. If you meet anyone with information on where praise god is, 
and tell them to find me so I can get rid of him. Of course, Grade One. With that, the three crows left, taking flight again, leaving Coda alone with the realization of just why the insects were acting strange. Crows, and other animals were smart, a lot smarter than humans gave credit to, and the animals have their own society and their own religions with gods and such. Often when animals encountered him and found he could speak to them, they thought of him as their god. Coda had long ago given up on denying it and just let the animals call him what they wanted to. Crows in this case call him Yadagarasu, as in the crow god of guidance, but what was important here was the name all insects called his cousin. Taro, to all animals, was known as Tithonus, more commonly known as the Greek god of insects, an evil god who would lead all insects to self-destruction as he commanded the swarms to destroy the entire planet. Coda supposed it was quite fitting, which was worrying that his cousin was in the city, and apparently having the insects attack people was something the crows considered unnatural. I think... I think that my cousin is hurting people. Coda informed Amplifier. Oh? Coda nodded and explained how his cousin had a quirk to control insects, and that his cousin's side of the family were criminals. Let me call the station. They might have information on his case to help us. A call, and inquiry later, an Amplifier informed him that there had been a new drug that had a heap of negative side effects that was hurting people, but also that there hadn't been that many victims yet. The only reason they related the new drug to what they were asking is that the victims all denied taking the drug in the first place. If this drug was the unnatural venom the crows were talking about, then it could fit. And if Hachisuka was using his quirk, then his cousin would always know if someone was coming for him. Using his quirk to gather information from insects, Amplifier looked at him. Do you want to see if we can track down this cousin of yours? Coda hesitated, knowing if he chose to go forward he would be forced to face his cousin and all those bugs, but he was a hero student. If his cousin was hurting people, then Coda had a duty to put a stop to him. So with that in mind, Coda gave a nod. The rest of the day was spent looking for leads, but they found nothing, though Coda had the animals keeping a lookout for his cousin. Thursday afternoon after school let out, he and Amplifier were once more on patrol when a crow came flying towards him. Great one! Great one, to the setting of the great fireball. The insect god is moving. Follow. Follow. The crow took off and Coda followed after him, with Amplifier following behind him. After an hour, they were in the outskirts of the town, an old warehouse. As they traveled, Coda called out to the nearby animals, especially ones that ate insects, to follow him for a feast. An insect-riddled building. Even from this distance, Coda could see the warehouse being covered in bugs. Go and feast. Coda called out to the various insect eaters. The animals charged towards the building and started to eat up all the insects. A loud screech filled Coda's ears as the insects cried out from the attack. He covered his ears, causing Amplifier to shoot him a confused look, her ears unable to pick up the sound the insects made. The door of the warehouse banged open and out Taro came, a couple heads taller than Coda, and twice as thick. Taro's black eyes glared at him. Oh, it's baby Coda. What the hell do you want, weakling? Coda gulped and whispered. You've been using your quirk to hurt people. Yeah? So what? As a pro hero, I will be taking you to the station to be questioned for your illegal usage of your quirk, Amplifier stated. Taro scoffed. Just try it, even if you catch me. Kuin me and my family will just break me out. Listen up. These two-leggers are intruding on our nest. Attack and inject them with your venom. The insects all started moving towards them, now ignoring the animals that were attacking them. Coda gulped. His control over insects had always been weaker than Taro, the downside to his quirk versus his family members. Because their control was more specific, they could override his control. Still, he had to try. Please, don't listen to Tithonus. He will lead you to your doom. Liar! The Great One will bring us to freedom, will save us from the predators who feast on us. You brought the predators with you. We will not listen to you, deceiver. The insects cried out, swarming towards them, though luckily the animals he had brought were doing a good job at thinning them out. Anima, stay back here and keep control over the animals. I'm going to apprehend your cousin. Uh, all right, Coda called out, seeing how Amplifier was already raising a head. So Coda stayed back, keeping an eye on her as she fought. He noticed his cousin pulling out a syringe and tried to shout in warning, but it was too late, and Amplifier was hit with whatever it was. Coda watched in shock as flames erupted from Amplifier's hands. His mentor seemed wide-eyed. But soon she was aiming the flames at the ground around her, burning the insects to a crisp, even as she kept moving towards Taro. 
He saw his cousin whip out another syringe, but this time, Amplifier moved her hands, causing the syringe to explode as the liquid heated up and expanded out of it. Minutes later, and the fighting was over, with Taro knocked out, the insects returned to normal, started to flee. Coda hesitantly made his way over and saw Amplifier was sweating and her eyes were dilated. Drug increases emotional responses, she gasped out, and was her tongue black? I'm going to pass out once it wears off. Call police. Amplifier shakily pulled out her phone and handed it over, sliding down along the warehouse wall and pulling her knees to her chest, rocking slightly back and forth. Coda hesitantly put a hand on her shoulder, even as he slowly navigated her phone with one hand and called the direct line to the station. After a half hour, the police arrived and Amplifier was unconscious. Coda did his best to answer their questions and soon was watching as the police investigated the warehouse. The warehouse seemed pretty normal, but the police did find a corpse that was covered in insects. Coda overheard them saying that the unusual amount of insects meant it could have been dead for a lot shorter than what they would normally say thanks to the rate of how corpses were normally feasted on. After another few minutes, the ambulance arrived and Coda boarded it with the paramedics as they loaded Amplifier in. All right, listeners, this concludes Chapter 47 of Little Acts of Kindness. I really like that the author did a chapter in here on Coda. I don't think a lot of fics really have any focus on Coda very often. It's pretty rare that I see that. So I think the author does a nice job of you know, touching more on Coda's quirk and bringing a connection back to Izuku's past uh, experiences with Coda's cousin and everything else that's happened previously in the fix. So I'm eager to hear your thoughts and reactions to this chapter as well. And as always, thank you so much for listening.